from Zoyut Snammer in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. B I T C H. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by H&R Block. You got people. For an office near you, call 1-800-HR-BLOCK or visit hrblock.com. Yeah, I like the way the music trailed out under the billboard. Very nice. Good work. We're getting it done. <laughs> Thank you so much for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Here we are <laughs> together again on the radio. I am looking at a uh, an amazing little article. What university is this from? Oh, this is the uh, this is St. John's University in what a great name for a town, Collegeville, Minnesota. And um, one of the Chick students there wrote a column for the newspaper, which is called The Record. And uh, I'm going to read it to you right now because uh, I can't tell you if the author of this piece is homely. Because I've never seen her. I just generally suspect that, generally speaking, women who write columns like this generally are homely. They are generally, in general, the fat and fuglies. Now, again, I haven't seen Robin Meyer, the author of this piece. She could be the most beautiful woman in the world. Or maybe not. Well, generally speaking, women with an opinion like this are generally fat and fugly fives. The three half girls. So let me read to you now from... A column by Robin Meyer in the St. John's University newspaper, The Record, in Collegeville, Minnesota. Here it is. This is her piece. It goes like this. Hooters. Some say they eat there for the food. But considering that Buffalo Wild Wings is right down the road, I find that argument entirely unconvincing. Combine this fact with the cultural reality of St. Cloud, where the only true means of passing time is dining at one of the many chain restaurants of choice. But I digress. That's the writer's version of saying, but that's not what I called about. But I had to write a 350-word piece, so I'm filling space. What are you saying when you decide to dine at Hooters Restaurant? I would venture that you are purchasing more than the, quote, delightfully tacky fun that is advertised. Really? When you decide to purchase a meal at Hooters, you are also endorsing the company monetarily. In a sense, what you buy is an opportunity to observe to be entertained. You got a problem with that? As a woman or man, you cannot help but realize the disproportionate number of, when's the last time you saw this word, bosomy waitresses they employ. I'm right back in 1957. (laughs) Here it is, it's Playboy After Dark, and there's the bosomy Jane Mansfield. (laughs) Bosomy. They still using that word in the Midwest, bosomy? Says here, when I consider the hiring tactics, 
More is purchased than simply a basket of chicken wings. Women are selling their breasts and curves, and men are buying. Fantastic, right? That's me, adding my editorial comment. It is important to be upfront about this purchase. A service is sold, and a service is purchased. And words are being added to this piece to fill it out to 350 words, or whatever it is. How you ever do that when you wrote a report in school? It had to be a certain number of words. Is a uh, I am writing about the book uh, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. This is a very long book that probably took a long time to write. Some people, on the one hand, think it's a very long book. Others disagree. You ever get into that BS? You just start taking out the shovel and filling space on a page. That's how this piece feels. On the other hand, as four words, okay. <laughs> Says here, however, one may argue that because the women are freely offering this service, it is a legitimate exchange. Well, it's not only legitimate, it's legal, ethical, moral. Right? She says, legitimate, perhaps, more so because it has become socially acceptable to objectify women for profit. I would not necessarily blame the Hooters workers. Because <laughs> they're chicks, too, right? Just to guess here, they're chicks, too. They're just not as homely as people who write for school newspapers. Some write for school newspapers. Others wear tight little orange T-shirts and get big tips at Hooters. They work at Hooters because they got big tips. Gratuities, you know what I mean. They get very large tips. They've got, like, those cartoon-style tips, you know, like. <laughs> There's nothing like going to a restaurant and, and, and getting a big tip. She says, many may be driven to this work out of necessity. I do object to the men and women who chose to monetarily support and endorse this establishment. It is less than subtle that a woman of less voluptuous proportions would not be offered a position and that men would be transferred to the kitchen. By the way, guys, how many of you would like to put on a tight orange T-shirt and be a server at Hooters? Any men who are working in the kitchen at Hooters are not complaining. I'll tell you right now. She says, this discriminatory hiring oversteps an employer's discretion. What is said by a group of men who choose to go to Hooters? Does this somehow affirm their masculinity? Gary, I would like to prove that we are men. After the show, why don't you and I drive over to the Hooters in Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard across from the Chinese Theater? We will park the car in the back. We will go in. We will sit down like a couple of gorillas, and we will talk dirty to all the women in the tight orange T-shirts. What do you think? It'd be a guy's night out, Gary. What do you think, huh? I just love the way the, the fat and fuglies think. It's amazing. Um, I would argue that there is nothing particularly manly about misguided behavior. This guy to behavior. By the way, how many of the chicks at Hooters are like single moms who need the money to raise their bastard children? In a sense, men are helping. I mean, are you saying the women who are there shouldn't be able to sell their services? And the guys shouldn't be able to help them support their families? Is that what you're saying, dear? Now get this. Here's a little jargon she's going to throw in here. 
This social groupthink is destructive to both men and women. Groupthink, one word. Men are encouraged to objectify women, while women are encouraged to view themselves as observed members, ever conscious of their perceived concept of beauty. By the way, has a beauty pageant contestant or anybody who's a 9 or a 10 ever written a piece like this? Ever? Ever? Seriously. <laughs> They are made to focus on their appearance to an obsessive point. Women are not means to sexual activity or carnal gratifications. Speak for yourself, honey. Like men, they are ends in themselves and deserve to be treated accordingly. Well, you're not going to... They're ends in themselves, but this is a place called Hooters. There's another restaurant where their ends can be treated accordingly. I refuse to allow my money to objectify the female body. At her own expense, by the way. It's not at her own expense. The women at Hooters get big tips. They're being paid to show what they have. By the way, dear, if you don't want to show up at Hooters, that's fine. We want to keep the delightfully tacky atmosphere fun and exciting. And we don't need the, the gals like you coming in there and complaining about it. She says, young girls do not dream of working as Hooters waitresses or strippers. What do they dream of working as, baristas? Is that somehow uh, more acceptable? I'll tell you what, they probably make a lot more money at Hooters. Jesus. By the way, Hooters waitresses and strippers have nothing in common. Except uh, frequently big hooters. We should no longer pretend that there is nothing wrong with teaching our daughters that their breasts, butts, and essentially their sexuality can be sold. Why not? It's true. Sexuality has been sold since the beginning of time, sweetheart. You'll learn this eventually. If you had any sexuality to sell, again, I haven't seen her. Maybe she's the most sexual, beautiful, wonderful woman in the universe. I'm just speculating that if she has this opinion that there's no sexuality there to be sold and that she is jealous of the women who are selling their sexuality. Just an opinion. She says women can't be reduced to their parts. Tell that to Vita Guerra. <laughs> Speaking of being an end in herself, deserving to be treated accordingly. <laughs> I'll show you an end in itself. Turn around, Vita. I can't even tell you what her face looks like. Honestly, if I saw Vita Guerra walking down the street, you know how hot I am for Latin chicks. If I saw her walking down the street, if I saw her face, I would not know it was her. Now, if I saw her ass walking down the street, I would know that intimately. It says here... Women and men may have the freedom to express their sexuality openly. However, to the extent that it subordinates one sex to another, it should not be tolerated. Hooters may advertise the sexiest chicken wings in the Stearns County area, but until they change their marketing approach, I remain unpersuaded. Well, that's great, darling. Uh, may I say that Hooters is doing just fine without you. You keep boycotting. You and all the other uh, concerned women out there. And the homely women, too. All of you. So I read you this little piece from a college newspaper. And my opinion is that poor Robin Meyer, a junior at St. John's University, Uh, she uh, will learn one day that uh, the pretty girls are going to get invited to the south of France, and they'll be bought condominiums, and they'll get big tips in restaurants. And that the only chicks are going to have to study very hard in school because there's no man who's ever going to pay their bills. What's wrong with telling the truth, right, boys? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Now, how would you say dump that bitch in Chinese? What would that mean literally? 
It would be like, uh, take that slut and throw her in the trash. <laughs> throw, throw her out. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. All right, we uh, read you the little op ed piece there from the school newspaper near St. Cloud, Minnesota, St. John University. This woman is upset about Hooters. And about women being objectified for money. The only women who complain about that are women who can't be objectified even in their dreams. Women nobody wants to have sex with. That's just an opinion. It's my opinion. That's my little op-ed piece. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Rick of the Tom Like His Show. What's going on, Dad? Not much, son. I just want to say that most of these women that are wah, wah, wah about Hooters and anything else are women that probably applied for the job, and the manager said, no, you're not hired. You know what I mean? I understand what you're saying. I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, when you see these protests against pornography or protests against Hooters when a new Hooters opens... Or, for that matter, protests against abortion. Uh, all you see are women that no man would ever F in a million years. You don't see hot chicks out there. If I if I have a choice to choose between going to Hooters, McDonald's, Buffalo Shack, whatever the place may be, and if, if I want to go to Hooters, who's you to say that I can't go to Hooters to pay women? They're, they're not naked, you know? So what if they're naked? You know what? I, I, I would love to open a hot wings place with naked chicks. Why not? Yeah, well, you know, I'd be the first one there, Dad. I'd be the first one there. I mean, why not just take this all the way? Exactly. By the way, if this chick hates Hooters, she ought to try that Bone Daddy's. We're in Dallas. We hit that Bone Daddy's. Have you ever heard of this place? <laughs> there you go. No, no, no. Have you ever been to Bone Daddy's, Rick? It's in, it's in the Dallas area. No, but you know what? I'm going to tell you. I want to tell you about it. And anybody listening in Dallas, you either know about it or you you should go there because it's outrageous. This does Hooters one better. The women at this place are way hotter, way hotter than what you get at Hooters. Yeah. And there's a little bit of ethnic diversity there, so you know you got a nice little Asian population there, Latinas. I mean, hotter than hot. I mean, you just wouldn't believe how hot they are. There's a place I bought that opened up right by where I live in Buena Park called Texas Lucy's, and I walked in there the other day, and that place is Hooters, probably about, not as bad as Hooters, but I mean, they're, they're clothes, but they're, who needs clothes when you're going to eat, you know what I mean? As long as she's nice looking and stuff like that, who cares, Tom? Screw these women that want to take away what we have, you know? Screw them, Tom. That's right, screw them. For God's sake, screw them. By the way, by the way, I am looking right now at the Bone Daddy's website. It's uh, BoneDaddies.com, no apostrophe. Yeah. And they have a photo gallery. If you don't believe me that these are like the hottest chicks you've ever seen at one of these places, you got to see it. All it's right. outrageous. You, know you take care, buddy. I'm going to the poker tournament tonight right now, so uh, you take care, buddy. Bye, right, you too. There he goes. I was waiting for the poker tournament right now. One eight hundred five eight. Look at those chicks! Oh my god, that's great. They got one where they're all leaning over. Oh. We've seen some of these girls in person, Gary. I recognize these girls. Look at that. Who's the guy in the middle? Is he Bone Daddy? Or is he a customer? Maybe he's a customer. I don't know. I'll tell you what, this isn't porn, but it's almost as good. BoneDaddies.com. Just look at the photo gallery. Tell you what, you'll be eating there. By the way, that's some of the best barbecue I've ever had, too. So and now I want to go back to Dallas and eat a Bone Daddy. That's what I want to do. And I want to tip my waitress. <laughs> Big tips. 
one 800 800 Women hate this when we talk about this stuff. What are you going to do? Hot chicks don't mind. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Dane on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dane. Long time, first time. First off, i got to say thank you, Dad. You've taught me everything I know, and it's doing me very well. Love that. Tom, um, this Robin chick is an idiot, man. Total, complete idiot. I'm 24 years old. I'm a server. I've been a server for about four years right now. And I make great money. I work at a nice restaurant in southern Orange County, and I make killer money for my age. No one, no one in the service industry is forced into that job. These people, these girls who work at Hooters are working there because they are probably making great money for serving fried food and beer. It's easy. It's easy. All they have to do is show a little bit of leg and a little bit of boob. That's it. That's it. There's no one. There's no one going around with a gun and a whip and saying, "Girls, we want you to work at Hooters." In fact, you don't have a choice, girls. You have to work at Hooters. These girls fill out an application. They ask to work there. By the way, why don't women ever complain about hot dog on a stick? Great point, Tom. I've seen those chicks jumping up and down on that lemonade. Uh, you see when those chicks are up there pumping that lemonade in those skippy the outfits. Not that I've ever looked. Of course not. But, uh, you know, they, it's not, you know, Hooters on a stick or people would flip out. But, no, hot dog on a stick. The, the chicks have way sexier outfits than hot dog on a stick. I, I mean, agree. those girls have to shave their delicate bikini area before they go to work. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and these girls at Hooters, they're not walking around in bikinis, Tom. They're in shorts and a, t and a, and a little T-shirt. There's right. Nothing, nothing wrong there. You, if you're lucky, a little cold breeze blows by. Exactly. Hey, Tom, thanks so much for everything over these past six, seven years I've been listening. Can you take me out? Uh, it's not Elliot Spitzer style. It's the chick who made the song. It's little Kobe, little Kobe style with uh, Elliot Spitzer in the background. I don't know what you do, but at the same time, we probably do one after the other. Here you go. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine, number nine. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Yes, is there a problem with women being objectified? All you ugly chicks who have a problem with that, you should call me right out and tell me why. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. The objectification of women. <laughs> you notice nobody has a problem when it, when when you get those fat models. And they're walking around on the runway. Nobody ever says, oh, that's so terrible. These women are being objectified. It's like, you go, girl. Isn't that great? You go, girl. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Isn't that great? They're large and in charge. Isn't that fantastic? Nothing wrong with objectifying them. The problem women have is objectifying hot chicks. Chicks who are hotter than they are. I mean, that's what this all goes back to. That's what it all boils down to. It's typical female sniping at another female. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. You know, it kind of kills me when women write articles like this because, I mean, how easy do they have it? I mean, a lot of them, all they have to do is just stand there and they get big bucks. I mean, you hardly ever hear that with guys. You know what I mean? And, I mean, I've been to Hooters plenty of times where it's been the chick who suggested, hey, let's go to Hooters. And I do like their wings. I mean, I, I like the ambiance, too, but, you know, it's it just kills me that women always say that. And, I mean, no one ever says anything about men being objectified because they are. Well, you know, when we're objectified, when we get married. We're, yeah, well, we're also objectified for, like, our bank accounts. And well, that's what I'm talking about. We're, when we, yeah. we get married, we're objectified for what we have. Exactly. I mean, and, and no one ever really complains about that. And well, that's perfectly okay with the ugly time. chicks. That's fine with them. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, they, they just want to do it because, uh, yeah, exactly, because they're fat and fugly and they can't, they can't pull it off themselves. Everyone complains about what they're not good at. Well, I think that's what it's all about. That's the only woman who ever complained about this stuff. Yeah. So, well, thanks a lot, Tom. Can you take me out? I'll take we'll you out. out. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Justin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Justin. 
Hey, you know, I, I, it all just comes down to jealousy, man. I mean, these women are just jealous. That's all they, you know, it, it all comes down to, you know, if they want to not be objectified and all this stuff, it's like, you know, put on a burqa, go to the Middle East. You, you know, I mean, get out of get out of America. You know, I mean, you don't see Europe, you know, uh, crying and complaining and all this stuff. I mean, they're they're open. They're they they have uh, places where women are walking around naked serving food. And nobody cares. Even the fat women don't care. You know. So, well, by the way, when I was when I was in when I was in Europe last summer, I was in Italy and I was reading the British paper, the Financial Times, mm -hmm. and there was an article written by an American female who had moved to England, mm -hmm. and uh, she had visited Italy, and she was all upset uh, that women like to dress sexy and they're giggly and they flirt with guys. And she was all upset about this, all upset, you know, because she's used to being a ball-busting bitch in the United States. And now if she wants to meet a guy, she has to compete with all the women who are giggly and flirty and, frankly, fun to be around. Yeah, yeah. And I just love seeing her complaining about this because why would any man want to be with a ball-busting bitch instead of a diminutive, deferential, giggly, girl-like chick? Mm-hmm. That's what guys want. And and when the ball-busting bitches figure that out, they'll be too old to do anything about it. Well, well, you know, it's funny. You know, it's not just Hooters, but it's it's other work environments, too. You know, my wife is a, a little blonde, and she used to work at the Anaheim Police Department, the dispatch center. And, man, you talk about whale world over there. She was the only little blonde. Well, she only lasted there four months because, you know, all these cops are coming up talking to her because she's the cute little blonde. And uh, you got all these fat hogs in there that are getting jealous and stuff, so... She lasted four months, man, and she was out. So, you know, it's just it kind of it's a crack up because uh, you know either either they're not hot and they're jealous, or or they're just out to get anybody who's not fat like them. <laughs> you know, so I just think it's uh, yeah, it's too bad for them actually. You know, yep, no, no, no doubt about that. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six six. Tom. You are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. newspaper by a female student who was all upset about Hooters. Holy cow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Juliana on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Do you care, darling? I do. I do. I'm doing great. Good. I'm glad. I was just calling in because the um, topic was really, really cool. I used to weigh 200 and almost 230 pounds, and I lost a lot of weight. Um, when I was 230 pounds, I was, like, totally against the objectification of women. And now that I've lost the weight, I've totally lost that whole side of my personality is completely diminished. You can't wait to be objectified. I can't. <laughs> That's what girls want. <laughs> Not completely, but yeah, you do kind of want to be objectified a little bit. That's right. Yeah, it's true. You'd love some guy to say, hey, nice ass. <laughs> yeah, probably. I would pretend like I didn't, but, yeah, I would like it. Yeah, you'd love it. <laughs> do you have a nice ass? I do. Well, it's getting there. It's getting there. You, you have to, I have to admit, after all the um, weight loss, it takes a lot more work to get to where I want to be. Yeah? So yeah, what, what, body part, what body part looks the best? Um, probably my boobs. Really? 
Yeah, my boobs have always been the best part of my body, even when I was really, really big. Really? Yeah. What's your cup size? Um, Actually, I'm a double D, and I didn't lose my boobs. I was really happy about that, because usually when women lose weight, they lose their boobs first. Wow. And yeah, so I didn't lose anything in the cup size, but I did lose around, you know, the width of the chest. Wow. Yeah, so See, I got lucky. So you like nothing more than for guys to stare at your boobs. You know what? You know, I when I was really big, um, I used to wear really, really revealing shirts. And now that I'm thinner, I don't wear them as often. Because you feel like you, know, you have I think other... I'm to compensate. I think you you, I you probably feel like you have other things guys can look at now. Yeah, yeah, I do. And I think that people, because I am thinner, I think they can kind of see me more now. Because when you're big, you really go out of your way to, um, I don't know how to put it, but you're not yourself. And when you lose the weight and people can see you for who you are, then um, it just makes it a lot easier on you just to be appreciated for who you are rather than trying to overcompensate by either being too nice by being like a doormat and letting everybody walk all over you because you are big so you think that you know they're not going to like me for this so i have to go out of my way to um you know compensate for it so you're so, working yeah. hard to be objectified every day of the week excuse me so you're working harder to be objectified now every day of the week <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> Listen to you. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Appreciate the call. There she goes. She'd like to be objectified. She used to be opposed to objectification. Now she wants to be objectified. 1-800-5800-TOM is her telephone number. Daniel, on the Tom Liggett Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? I'm Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, I totally agree with you. You know, when I first got with my wife, she, you know, she was all into the porn and let's go to the strip clubs and all that. And and uh, when my son was born, you know, she was feeling a little self-conscious about herself. And, and so then all of a sudden it was cheating to look at it and it's objectifying and wrong. And, uh, you know, she started going to the gym and started looking good again. Now all of a sudden she's like, oh, yeah, let's go out to the strip club. Let's go out to the clubs. And so, you know, it just, it shows both sides totally proves your point, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really the way it is. And, you know, all you need to do is go to one of these protests or see them on TV. Look who's protesting. They're hideous. Yeah, I got to agree with you. Hey, right, can you take me out tribal with a little uh, Snoop Dogg? I certainly can. Bye, it's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Anything wrong with objectifying women? What's the problem? They getting paid. What do you care? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Lindy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom Likas. Uh, long time, first time. Thank you, Lindy. Uh, I'm doing good. Hope you're doing the same. Hey, I just had a comment about your, um, I just kind of broke in last minute to your conversation this afternoon, and you're talking about Hooters. And I'm one of those women who don't see anything wrong with it. I absolutely love going to Hooters. I, I love another beautiful woman. I admire another beautiful woman. But I think it's time for um, somebody to come around and uh, make a, a place for us women to go to. Not a Chippendales kind of place, but a Hooters kind of place. So well, that um, I'm sure if there's a profit to be made, some female entrepreneur will do it. I would definitely think there's a profit to be made. The only thing I'd have to say is that I think it'd be a lot harder for us to drag our men in there than it would be. Oh, of course it would. In there. What guy wants to cross swords with a waiter? Come on, please. Yeah, well, I... Right? Oh, exactly. 
You know, but uh, I'll put it this way, Lindy. Uh, why don't you, uh, if you believe in your idea, why don't you uh, get a small business loan and uh, find out if it's true? What, what do you think about that idea? I'm interested. I'm not a chick. I don't know. <laughs> no, but do you think it's a money-making idea? I tend to think that chicks are not like guys. No, I don't want to walk in and see uh, somebody in Speedos. But I'd like I, to I think chicks are much more motivated by carbohydrates. I think if you had a uh, an equivalent of Hooters that serves cinnamon buns, like Cinnabon, but only like when they would serve you at a table. <laughs> no, I'm. And thinking... then they had like no mirrors in the place. No, see, I'm thinking more like a nice, nice a place. Sometimes. That that I think. By the way, now I'm ready to get a small business loan. <laughs> that's no, that's going to be my idea. I'm talking about a nice place, a nice establishment, something like Hooters, but where the men wear nice tight jeans and just enough to to uh, appeal. To get you thinking about it. I, I think without serving uh, 10,000 calorie cinnamon, cinnamon buns on a plate. <laughs> think it won't work. It would huh? not work. Well, I, I thought it was. What women time. want is a place where they can go. Just like men in some states of this country, like Florida, uh, go to bars that have no windows. I think women would love to go to a place with no windows, no mirrors, where you can go in and eat like a complete pig. Where nobody can see you. Wait a minute, but there are men that do the same thing. But men are not embarrassed about it. Men eat at Carl's Jr. in the light of day, okay? I'm not embarrassed about eating. I'll eat in front of a man. I have no problem with that. Yeah, but, you know, come on. I, you, I, I once dated a woman, and every time we would go out, she would say, I'll just have a salad. Oh, those, yeah. And one day, and this is a true story, one day she said to me, ah... Oh, I left my handbag in my car. Would you go out and get it? And so I said, well, okay. She wanted to get her makeup so she could go to the little girl's room. So I said, okay, I'll go to your car. I'll get the valet to bring your car back. So I went out, and I asked the valet to bring her car back, and he did, and I had the key. And in the back seat, literally, it was not knee deep. It was up to your neck deep in McDonald's wrappers, <laughs> Wendy's wrappers, so what she did was she would, like, eat in the car on the way to a date. She'd roll through the drive through window and then toss the garbage in the back seat. The back you seat was... a woman of this statue? Well, no, no, not for long, dear. For long. By the way, this was somebody with... with, with she must have had a very high metabolism. But she did oh. not want to be seen eating like a pig in front of a guy. Uh, so, so my idea is let's get a restaurant with no windows... But in the bathroom, there'd be no mirrors. Okay, no big mirrors in the place. Nowhere where you can see yourself, see your ass getting larger. You just go in there, eat like a pig. I think I would, you can't legally keep men out, but I would encourage, you know, no men, men encouraged not to come in, you know, so that women could eat in peace, eat like pigs where nobody could see it. Wow, you really think the worst of us. There are some of us out there that are just a little different. Darling, uh, when you're trying to start a business, you're not trying to start it for the exceptions to the rule. You're trying to start it for the rule. I gotcha. You're trying. To, you're, you're going in the way where you're going to make the bucks. That that's exactly that's right. Where you are, where you are now. Yes. Well. Yes. Well, let me give you an example. I had a woman say to me not long ago after I had come back from Costa Rica. I'm uh, taking a wonderful vacation. She said to me, couldn't you do your show more like NPR? Couldn't you do your show more like NPR? It's so good. You know, they have all those informative pieces on there, all that educational material. It's the election year. Couldn't you do it more like NPR? And I said, you know, I just got back from Costa Rica. Do you know where the guy who works at NPR went on vacation? Costa Mesa. That's the difference. So when you're starting a restaurant like this, I don't want to start a restaurant for the few people who are an exception to the rule. I gotcha. I want to start it for the vast majority of piggy women out there who would like to eat where nobody can see them. <laughs> well, I hope that if you do uh, someday 
um, decide to go down that road that you'll remember my name and my idea. Well, I don't think we have the same idea, darling, but I thank you for the call. It's the Tom Likas Show.